I'd like to call the meeting of October 28th to order. And the first item of business is public comment. And I see that I do have public comment. Ms. Days? Ms. Days. I think it's all Mary Louise. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. um, I would just uh, like to express my sorrow at um, seeing that uh, our lady daughter of the church was demolished, uh, except for the very, uh, very um, front of the, uh, with the uh, uh, mm. parapet structure. It was my childhood church, and I was down in that neighborhood on other business, and first noticed that it had been vacated, the interior was empty, and then the next week I noticed all that was left was the very, very front uh, section of it, uh, not none of the building, and that the adjacent convent was gone and the former Hoff Hospital building that I had uh, written about in Notitius uh, was also gone the, and the site was being graded. So um, the sign out in front said it was a proposed, uh, or that the project was a remodel and addition. Um, and of course, that's quite an extreme remodel. So I looked up the, the actions and I could find no action in here that approved demolition. Uh, you had looked at um, uh, historic structures reports a few years ago and then recently there had been a, a, uh, a revised one, but none of them mentioned, to my knowledge, although I have not been able to read them, mentioned uh, uh, demolition of the church. Uh, the background of the church is partly in this building. It used to be on, uh, it began as a part of the Catholic church compound on Figueroa Street, just east of State Street. It was the old Armory Hall, um, and then it was St. Aloysius Hall. For a time it was a parochial school, and then it was moved to become Our Lady of Guadalupe School in the mid, uh, Our Lady of Guadalupe Church in the mid-1920s. Uh, I do hope that the Historic Structures Report at least, you know, contained all of that information. There is a pretty good uh, survey form on it in the Phase Three survey materials. Um, I haven't um, bothered uh, Jake Jacobus about this. I just spoke with Jaime about it, and uh, um, he said yes, it, uh, it that had just taken place, the demolition, but I'd like to just put on the record that there are no records here of demolition having been approved of that. Uh, I believe it was on the uh, potential uh, designation list. Thank you. And I believe Jake did speak a little bit about this, the, and you weren't present, so we, we actually talked about it and he, he explained what had happened. Oh, so it would be in, in your minutes of, of, of a meeting? One of the meetings? Know, okay. It was during public I don't know comment. What was put I believe Kellen brought it up. Oh, I see. Essentially, um, this commission saw a structures report prepared by Ron Nye. Uh, the project proposal at that time was to, the first proposed project was to put one side chapel on the uh, building. And then they came back with a second proposal to put the second side chapel, which would make the crucifix form of the church. Uh, it was my understanding at the, the last that I had seen it before this commission that it was indeed going to be an addition on the back of the building and that the front part of the building was going to be left intact. Um, it was as much a surprise to me that they took as much of it down as they did. Um, unfortunately, we had a sort of a perfect storm of a very bad events that happened and it ended up the architect came in and or the applicant came in and applied for ABR. Staff did not catch it and it went through the ABR. As you know, the ABR is more liberal about mm -hmm. allowing that type of activity and, 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 and replacement with new material. So. Um, we do have a record of, you know, we have photographic documentation and a record of, of the building, but um, you know, I, I can only apologize for whatever part I may have taken place. It was not my understanding that they were going to do that, and I learned at the same time that you learned that the demolition had taken place. So it actually was presented to the ABR as a revised application then, demolition? It went to the ABR as a, as a more or less a complete remodel, and um, it's, you know, like I say, it, it should have come here, uh -huh. um, but uh, some things happened. It just, it just, you know, one of those things that unfortunately 
but the project description on their agenda was was it changed or it's, I'm just thinking about the record, you know. Well, the, it, uh, you know, the definition of demolition, or, you know, there's, there's different definition, definitions of demolition. The report identified that front facade of the, of the uh, church as being the important facade and having the character defining right. features. Right. Um, it also defined that they were going to save salvage the windows and other materials from the mm -hmm. back of the church. But there again, it was my understanding that uh, it was going to be more of an addition to the rear, mm -hmm. not so much a, a new a new chapel. Mm -hmm. One of those things. Yeah. Thank Ma you, Madam Chair. I just yeah. want to elaborate a little bit about um, that. There, there is a present a revision proposal that involves accessibility and structural changes, and we're going to have them, for the record, come in and, and indicate that there was more demolition that occurred on the project uh, and make sure that those changes are uh, consistent with the historic fabric. That, And they obviously reconstruct it in, in the similar manner that's represented on the plans. That's all we can ask for at this point. And then uh, what Jake was alluding to is regarding learning our lessons, our potential list uh, flag was on a uh, one parcel of a five parcel property and that's the the glitch that we should have tagged all parcels and unfortunately we didn't catch it um, and it was submitted under a separate parcel that didn't have a flag or tag so we've learned our lesson and we're focused in on on making sure that doesn't happen again yes thank you okay I would. oh yep we have another Just public drive. comment well, the next item, I guess, will be uh, 301 Canon Perdido. This gentleman is here. My question and the question that the, uh, uh, and you, I don't know whether my letter was distributed by a, one of our Pro Chase uh, uh, Preservation Committee uh, members, and I think it will be explained. My request is that if they're going to do that this commission should have the plans of the rehabilitation should review the plans of uh, rehabilitation to sue to see whether it fits your standards especially since this Historic. I mean, I know it isn't officially historic, but as Mary Louise uh, points out, this was a market, uh, and Mary Louise probably could tell you more closely than I can. When in the uh, 19th century it was built, it used to be on the corner of uh, Canon Perdido and uh, Santa Barbara Streets, and was uh, and. Uh, was moved in the uh, 20s when uh, the uh, present buildings across from the uh, now the Presidio were built. Thank you. Thank you, Kellen. If there's no more public comment, I'll move to the next item, mm -hmm. which is approval. Oh, Mr. Jacobus. Um, this, this is, this is going to come up, and we need to, to get a little bit of direction as to how you want to proceed from here. We can't have a full-blown discussion because we, it's not on the agenda. I just wanted to explain a few things. Um, this is a project, you know, staff often does uh, administrative approvals. Generally, if we didn't do some, a certain amount of administrative approvals, this commission would be here for a few weeks stellar it because there's just too many jobs that come in. We're very careful when we do stuff like this. this these are the actual plans that were reviewed. When the architect submitted these plans, I put these up. Okay, this is the legal, the, currently it's the Legal Aid Foundation is in there. The building is uh, suffering severe dry rot, it's got a lot of water infiltration, and they needed to get something done prior to the rainy season. Um, this is a building that we were definitely going to lose if we didn't do something. Um, when they came in with the plans, the proposal is to replace the siding on the south and the west walls with, with uh, a like-for-like -like siding. I was very careful to have them add the words. Um, it says here, siding to match existing profile 
um, so that we were very clear that we were going to get an exact match of the siding. And so that's how the plans were approved. We should have been seeing an, exa an exact match of the profile. Um, we were not informed that they, they were unable to get the exact match. The materials that we got... This is, of course, a piece of the redwood siding. And then this is the material that they're actually, that's currently going in place. And as you can see, there's a slight difference. Um, would the average person notice that? Probably not. Um, but because the building is being done one side at a time, you can see on that, that front uh, corner where the, the uh, siding is that it's not an exact match now. At this point, when they selected this material, they should have come back to staff and said, this is what we got. We don't have an exact match, but is it close enough? at which time staff would have either made a determination that it substantially conforms to what the project proposal is, or more likely, let's send it to HLC and let them take a look at it and make a decision. But they, they didn't do that, so they, they started putting the wood siding on. So that's how it's been, it's been caught. The photographs, just to point out a few things, um, you know, one of the things that they're talking about is the, the siding not matching up with the two elevations. Well, it never actually did. The building's had a lot of settling, and the, and the siding is kind of warped. Uh, the window details, they had to use a double glazed window, so I required that they use a, um, where the mullion breaks the glass. It's the same exact dimensions as the original windows, which you can see here, but it meets the current energy requirements, which is a building department requirement. And the idea is to give this building, you know, 50 more years of life and not and just 10 more years of life. So what we need to get a quick decision from you today is this. Do you want us to put this on an agenda so that you all can you know, see the, the presentations, see the, compare the sightings, and make a determination as to whether you feel this is the appropriate sighting or if they should actually come back with a sighting that more closely matches the original, or um, to allow staff to continue with the process that we're on, and we'd have to essentially make a fine substantial conformance that although it is slightly different, once the sighting's in place, it'll be similar enough. Uh, the building has uh, stucco, two different types of siding, you know, it's been added onto. It's a great little building. I actually, um, the woman who grew up there as a child actually came to my office one time and told me all the stories about her growing up there when it was a, a store. So it's got, it's got a really cute little history to it. Um, and it is, it is one of our last surviving, you know, it's one of those um, false front buildings that was designed, you know, in such a way to make it look more grandiose from the street by having the, the false parapet front. The building is not well constructed, I can tell you that. It was not built to last 100 years. We're trying to squeeze another 100 out of it. Um, and it ha and as, as Callum mentioned, it did, it did get moved, but uh, it still retains most of its character-defining features. So the question before you is, is, do you want me to put this on the agenda so we can, at the next meeting, have a, a, a discussion on it and make some decisions? Okay. Um, may I ask for a straw vote, perhaps? How many would I, like to agendize I, I this? I do have a question. I need oh. clarification. Okay, so what, what you're... What you have out here is a very different color than the redwood, but I'm looking at these. Is the color matching the old? No, it will be painted. This is just the finish that's on this. It's like a... It's okay. Like a, a it will be painted roughly this way. It will be painted, yeah, this to match the existing building. Older color. Right. right. I see. Thank you. And this, this piece just happened to come out from underneath the, uh, a piece of trim or something. That's yeah. why it hasn't got the paint on it. Thank you. The other thing is, is the building's got about 14 layers of paint on it, so that also makes the reveal look a little bit different. It looks sharper on the new material. And as you can see on this material, it hasn't been painted. It has a sharp edge on it also. It's just that it doesn't appear that way because the building has you know, multiple layers of paint. Madam Chair? Yes. Before we take a straw vote, I'd like, just like to make a comment that I think one of the real problems here is getting this done before we get into the rainy season. And I would kind of hate to drag it out too long. Okay. So all those who would like to agendize it for the next meeting, please raise your hands. I think it's up to you, staff. Um, I think it's, it's your judgment call, Jake. And uh, because for me to make a decision, I will have to go look at look at the building, yeah. in, you know, look at it closely. Um, I, I am concerned that this this uh, siding is a character defining part of this building and so if we are putting a new material there that doesn't come close and to me this is 
close but really contemporary to me, so I'm, I'm, I'm a little concerned. I'm, I'm concerned about it. So it's hard for me. I, I have to go look at it. I have to go um, look at it because eventually this is all going to change because it's deter all the siding will be changed. Exactly. And I'm just concerned that if we don't, if we don't get the right thing, we will end up with some old, some old looking building which has a false kind of material. So, and I don't know the reason why they d were not able to find well, initially that. We maybe had, they like have I said, a we asked them to match why. exactly. Yeah. Um, um, and it, it would have to be, in order to get that material that you're holding now, it would have to be milled, yeah, each piece I milled. See. This was a, a, a yeah, piece that they could get custom off the shelf. Yeah, it's actually the same profile. What it Mr. Rowe. It actually, it actually has the exact same profile. The difference is, is that the old material, as we all know, old wood used to be thicker. Because it has, because it's thicker, there's. It's not that it's more bevel. It's exactly the same profile up to this point. But because there's more wood, the only difference in this is that as that, because it's thicker as it comes up, all, the only difference between these two pieces is that this dimension is this, and this dimension is slightly a little bit more because it doesn't have the more depth to the original wood. So the only way to do that, and this is being funded by the city of Santa Barbara as a grant, would be to uh, double to triple, quadruple the cost of it by going and getting it to be milled to the exact dimensions of, of the old wood. But it's wood for wood. It's the same as that profile, except for it's not as deep, so therefore it makes this dimension greater than this dimension because there's less shaving of it. But again, on that, I do want to specify that staff did specify you know, very clearly that the, the profile must match exactly. Um, so it was a matter of the material started being put on without staff being aware that uh, the, the profile was slightly different. And you can see it. If you look at the current condition of the building, you can see that this board appears to be slightly wider than the other board. And it's, off, it's there again, it appears to be more crisp because it's a new, it's a new angle versus the ones that have the 14 layers of paint on it. Yes, Mr. Pujo. Yeah, uh, it seems to me that these materials are close enough. What makes it look older is because the wood is older, <laughs> and, and the paint and the wear and tear. And but I just doubt that you can get, you know, uh, substance. I mean, you will do another product that will uh, be a substantial improvement over this one. What I'm saying, you can get exactly the same profile and spend a lot more money, but it's not going to be old wood. It's still going to be new wood. It's going to be freshly painted. It's going to be smooth compared to the other one that has, that has you know, it's, uh, it's shown its age. So I, I think, well, anyway. Madam Chair? Yes. This is turning into a discussion item. I know. Yeah. This is not what we're here to do, and I believe no one raised their hands when I asked who wanted to agendize this and who, whether or not we should put it for staff. Well, I'll take them... Uh, I believe, unless I'm incorrect, the commission feels that this should be left in staff hands and not be agendized. Just one, one more thing I want to point out also. Um, Callum's report talked about the windows looking different. The trim pieces haven't been put on yet. They'll have yeah. the trim pieces that match the existing. Thank you. But the double glaze is something we, we're having to deal with. And right. they did go the extra, it's considerably more expensive to break the outer pane of glass with the wood mullions. So it is a quality window. It's, it's, there again, it's not the original, but the originals were falling apart, and that was part of the problem. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And my understanding is when it's all said and done, it's going to be the same color scheme that's there yeah. currently. Yeah. Thank you. Changing color in EPV and on potential historic, or on uh, structure merit require HLC approvals. So if they wanted to change the color, that would come before you. Thank you. Not the exact. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next item of business is approval of the minutes of October 14th, 2009. I have a motion to. to Thank you, Madam. Do you have a couple of comments? Oh, good. On page five, uh, item nine, uh, it refers to El Arco building. The, it should be Larco, L A R C O, which was the name of the fishery. Okay. And the other comment I had was on page, was item nine. Uh, 
Oh, no, uh, no, I, uh, page 8, I'm sorry. Uh, I know this is part of the, of the, uh, just the, the description of the project, but there is still that mistake which has been found eligible for, for listing, where, it, as a matter of fact, that's the first sentence of the paragraph on the first uh, item, number 6. <coughs> uh, it is. I, I corrected that on the, um, it was after the agenda went out, I corrected it in the project description. Okay. Uh, I'd like to have Gabrielle pull it up on the computer and I can read to you what I changed it to, just to make sure it's correct. Okay. Um, let's see. That's okay. Anyway, project site contains a uh, 455 square foot signalman's building, which is listed on the National Register of That's Historic Places okay. and is a designated city landmark. That's great. Okay. Thank you. You're Those were my only comments. Thank you. And Mr. Pujol? I have a comment on, the, uh, on page 5, um, item 1, comment number 4. As to the commercial areas of the big plaza, it was suggested that it be designed with narrow storefronts instead of to break up the mass, say, to accommodate smaller tenants as a way to bring the building uh, uh, to more of a human scale, I guess. So, so it's, not, it's not so much to break up the mass as, as, as it is to, to accommodate smaller, ten smaller tenants. So you're basically changing the density. Well, no, I mean, more storefronts. I mean, instead of having one big right. tenant, to have three small tenants. I think that, right, that's, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Not sure if the density, yeah. density is a word, but it, it's the concept okay. is to, to create smaller tenants, rather. You understand? Tenants, T E N A N T S? Yes. Mm -hmm. To accommodate smaller tenants as a way to bring the building uh, to more of a human scale. Thank you. Any other comments, yes. uh, uh, Mr. Adams? Yes. Uh, I don't. Uh, 9, page 11, uh, under the motion, preliminary approval and continue to definitely look at uh, the second item of that motion. And the, and the la last sentence says, uh, as well as using the power of landscape, th that should really be as well as using landscape planters. Let's, let's come down to earth on that comment a little bit. The power of landscape. That's oh the dear. landscape plan. Is that me? <laughs> That's pretty dense. Oh, Robert, you're so dramatic. I know. <laughs> Are there any other comments? Madam Chair. Ah, oh, Mr. Sharp. Page 10, mm -hmm. item number 8, comment number, a part of the motion, number 5, which currently reads, there is concern with regard to the three-story massing. I think there at the end of that should be added at the east and west elevations. Yeah. Okay. Please. Thank you. Are there any other revisions, corrections, or additions? Seeing none, all those in favor of these minutes as corrected and amended? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. Abstain. One abstention. And I abstain from the first item. Next item is the consent calendar. Madam Chair, uh, item A, 316 Castillo Street was final approval uh, submitted with a condition of approval. Item B, 1935 State Street was continued two weeks. Item C, 205 East Carrillo Street was final approval as noted. Item D, 525 State Street was final approval with condition. Item E, 1316 State Street was final approval as submitted. Item F hey. was, yeah, <laughs> hallelujah. Um, and item F, 2300 Garden Street was final approval was submitted, and those were reviewed by Commissioner Sharp. I make, I make a motion to approve the consent calendar. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstain? That motion carries. Next item of business are announcements. I don't have any announcements today, yeah. Madam Chair. Just Commissioners Jury and Schallenberger are absent today. 
Thank you. Are there any other? Yes. I would just like to make a sort of an announcement. As you know, our holiday party is approaching. And at the next meeting, I will bring the sign-up sheet for what you plan to bring uh, for the food. And so you can begin thinking about that for two weeks. You have two it's weeks. To take me that about. long. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We'll forget it by then. Yeah. <clears throat> Don't worry, I will remind you. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. Yes. I would like to thank you. Let's see. The, uh, it has to do with um, uh, the city staff and I have, have noticed that there was a project where uh, they were uh, had to protect a big oak tree and they put a, a fence around the oak tree canopy uh, originally, and that was removed multiple times. Staff has really been really helpful and on it, and but I just want to say that if if we're trying to protect an oak tree in the district, and we ask for protection of that tree, then fences cannot be taken down, and building materials should not be put where uh, where the tree should be protected. And I just want to make that statement because it's just uh, getting, it's been getting on our nerves lately. But uh, so far today, it looks like it's handled uh, this particular thing. But uh, if a tree is supposed to be protected, it should be protected. Thank you. The next item of business are subcommittee reports. Are there any subcommittee reports? Seeing none, we'll go to the first item, which is a miscellaneous action item, consideration of intent to hold a public hearing. Madam Chair, you have before you a resolution of intention. Uh, this is for the um, building at the Myers Cottage at 710 Anacapa Street. Uh, the owner has given us uh, permission to designate it as a structure of merit. I know there was some uh, conflict as to whether it really rises to the level of landmark. Uh, we did have this in front of the uh, designation subcommittee, and we decided that you know let's get what we can get now, and if the building is here in 10 more years, 20 more years, maybe we can go that next step. But let's get a good structure of merit on it so we can keep an eye on it, and make sure that you have you know complete review over anything that's going to happen to it. And um, so the subcommittee agreed to go ahead and, and uh, pass it to you for structure of merit designation. So this this would essentially mean that we would hold a public hearing on November 11th, 2009. In which case, I will present you with a staff report and photographs and information that you need to make your decision. And uh, we will, at that point, make a decision as to whether we want to designate a structure merit or not. Thank you. Yeah, Ms. Murray. Madam Chair. Thank you, Jake. I just have one uh, point of discussion that I want to be sure it's included in the resolution or at least the background to the resolution. I think Jaime knows this. We had uh, expressed in the subcommittee that this commission had uh, uh, has wanted that building to be a landmark, mm -hmm. and because it was a way to prevent it from being uh, moved away from the site or demolished, and uh, and that was the point of disagreements for a while. But I I just want to be sure that that background caveat is there that even though this is going to be structural merit. That building is has this background that it should not be moved or demolished for any, you know, future owners to come. I'll make sure that that, that, that information gets into the report. Thank you. I make a motion to hold that hearing. Yeah. Right. We, we need a motion, right? Yeah. 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 Ms. Murray is the second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain. That motion carries. Thank you. Ms. Murray was seconding. First item would be the archaeology report for 3626 San Remo. Madam Chair, Dr. Glassow reviewed the report and, and agreed that uh, because no project, because no project, because the project has little or no <laughs> potential to result in significant impacts or on prehistoric or historic archaeological resources, no mi mitigation measures are required and the standard conditions regarding the discovery of unanticipated archaeological resources uh, should be uh, on plans prior to issuance of the building permit. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, has there anyone looked into the fact that this building may have historic value? Yes. Is it going to need a, an historic structures report? Thank you. We're only 
make a motion to accept the archaeology report. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. Abstain, uh, opposed? Abstain. That motion carries. Second item is 522 Garden Street archaeology report. Oh. Oh. For, uh, Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to reopen item number one to, for public comment. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yeah. I just um, had a similar question to Mrs. Boucher's. If this is the house, I think it is. It's a beautiful house. It needs to seen from the street. On, mm -hmm. on it the is. State tax property. And I noticed that Alexander Cole is listed as an agent. So. Mm -hmm. I, I hope that meant that the historic structures report will be prepared so that we can see the history of it. Uh, because oh, not on. <laughs> no. Thank you. I hope that uh, that a historic structures report will be prepared because the proposed project is for demolition of the residence and um, a small subdivision. So it's uh, it would really be. Uh, a loss to the neighborhood, I think. Thank you. Madam Chair, Thank you. Mr. Lamone has assured us there yeah. will be a historic sure. structures report. Mm -hmm. Thank here. you. Glad he's here. Um, back to item number two, archaeology report for 522 Garden Street. So, Madam Chair, Dr. Glassow reviewed the report and agreed that because the project has little potential to result in significant impacts, on prehistoric or historic archaeological resources, no mitigation measures are required, and the standard condition regarding the discovery of unanticipated archaeological resources uh, applies and shall be on the plans prior to issuance of building permit. Thank you. I'll make the motion to approve the report. Let's second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? That motion carries. Next item of business is 1704 State Street. This is a preliminary review. Mm. Will you introduce yourselves for the record? Uh, for the record, I am Jay Bladder from Hockhauser Bladder Architecture and Planning. I am Nigel Gomesol from Hockhauser Bladder Architecture and Planning. And I'm David Black, Landscape Architect. Thank you. Would you like to start your presentation? Do you have any? Yeah. Uh, uh, my name is Jay Bladder from Hockhauser Bladder Architecture and Planning, and we are the architects of record for 1704 State Street, uh, which is the Santa Barbara Artificial uh, Kidney Center. Uh, just a little bit of background, uh, the Artificial Kidney Center provides uh, necessary services to the community, uh, primarily serving patients with kidney failure. Uh, the necessity of this, for this project has grown uh, due to the uh, increase in the number of patients they serve in the community, uh, which is up 54 percent. And that's up 54 percent uh, with very little increase in population. So it's really an increasing need for the uh, general public to have the services that the center provides. Uh, in an effort to uh, meet this uh, capacity and provide better access to quality care, that was the reason for the inception of this project. Uh, it was a natural choice to be in addition to the existing center just for efficiency and centralizing operations and also the proximity of public transportation and providing these type of services where both employees and, and patients could have access to public transportation in the existing downtown center. Uh, uh, Brian Cornell's office designed the original building. Uh, Hockhauser Bladder was, ret was retained to expedite the design development and the construction documents. Uh, primarily based on our expertise in medical facilities, and we've done other dialysis centers and have worked with the uh, 
with the design construction team working on behalf of Dr. Allen and his partnership. Uh, the project's a 5,500 square foot single story uh, addition. It does involve the demolition of the corner property where the DAC video store is. Uh, there's also reconfiguration of the parking and landscape improvements to the property as well. It's a one story uh, structure. The project received uh, Planning Commission approval last December, it received the unanimous approval, and that was uh, for a development plan approval, a zoning modification to allow a reduction in parking, and a conditional use permit. That was in December of 2008. Uh, prior to that, it's been before the HLC on three occasions for conceptual reviews, uh, with successive uh, modifications being made to design. And at its last review, which I believe was last June in 2008, it received 7-0 uh, forwarding to the Planning Commission with favorable comments. And I thought what I might do is, is start by uh, addressing some of the comments from that last meeting and sort of work, walking you through the design of how we've tried to maintain the aspects that this uh, commission felt were positive, and then to uh, also elaborate on some of the design features of how we've gone about uh, expediting and sort of enhancing that design based on your comments as well as uh, the comments from the Planning Commission. Uh, I might add that the Planning Commission was extremely uh, positive on the canal design in terms of its, of its massing, its landscaping, and the whole approach in terms of its urban setting. Mr. Blatter, if you don't mind, I will actually read our comments so that there is no summary involved. All right, involved. thanks. The Planning Commission said... Said pro approval is subject to the following conditions. Design review, subject to the HLC review. Shall not grant preliminary approval until the following Planning Commission land use conditions have been satisfied. Tree removal and replacement. All trees removed except fruit trees and street trees approved for removal without replacement by the Parks Department shall be replaced on site on a one-for-one -one basis with a minimum 24-inch box-sized, 15-gallon-sized tree of an appropriate species or like species in order to maintain the site's visual appearance and reduce impacts resulting from the loss of trees. Landscape screening. Landscaping with low water use plants and or a solid screen wall or fence shall be provided to buffer the parking area from State and Valerio. The bus stop should design shall be coordinated with MTD and shall be coordinated with the landscaping and the design of the building on State Street and shall comply with the urban design guidelines for commercial bus stops. Parking lot lighting. The lighting in the parking lot shall be decorative and sensitive to the residential neighbors. Our own comments were continued to the Planning Commission with positive comments. One, there is full support of the circulation plan and relief from the parking requirements, considering the public benefit of the additional landscaping and the elimination of three driveways off of State Street, which takes into consideration the potential end user of this project. As to the design, the following comments and recommendations are made. A, the building composition, massing, size, bulk, and scale are acceptable. B, reconsider the materials of the garden wall and the long section nearest the corner of State and Valeria Streets, which should be treated as green walls, landscaped against a plain surface, with the exception of the longest wall having the detail as currently proposed. Study some resolution of the existing building entrance on State Street that respects both the symmetry and the integration of any openings into the facade. The building entrance shall be, should be integrated into the design. And lastly, the Commission still looks to some resolution of the balcony so that it is designed in a more traditional manner. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, with regard to the uh, conditions of approval from the Planning Commission, we'll, we'll go through this one, one by one to uh, demonstrate how we've complied with that in the uh, in the design process and the construction documents. Uh, I think what I'd like to do is, is go through your comments first and walk you through the design and then we can answer questions. Uh, Nigel Gomersall, the project architect, also uh, can then go specifically through details and get more detailed comments on specific window, cornice, and treatments, you know, as to how they're depicted on the elevation. Uh, with, with regard to the overall building design, uh, we felt as a, by nature, the dialysis center does not really require uh, significant fenestration, and I believe the initial design was more 
based on more massing than significant storefronts or the type of things you'd see on a, on a more retail-based project. We maintain the general massing of the original design, as you can see, and this is very consistent with the original uh, canal uh, plans. We have addressed the, the new entry. We felt that some areas that uh, needed some refinement was the, the depth of the archways and in terms of its position relative to this uh, tiled parapet. We've actually lowered it before this came up higher and it was a little more tenuous. We felt this was a more, a more balanced approach and a, and a better massing of the overall archway you know, relative to the new entry element. Uh, the existing, what's now the existing entry to the building, there is, and it was in the original design, a stone screen wall, and that's been intended to really sort of de-emphasize this and really let the focus and clarity to the main entry, which is this transitional element here. With regard to the overall palette, we chose to keep it a very simple palette, and we do have the material boards here of pretty much an off-white plaster building, stained wood and stained wood, you know, uh, beams and trellises, and then in some cases on the column caps, we've used a precast, a, a soft sandstone colored uh, precast. The windows would be bronze anodized uh, windows. Once again, not looking to be overly ornate, we feel the building is more of a, a study in simple mass and really the wall, and I think it was raised and complemented by the Planning Commission, serves as a backdrop for the enhanced landscaping along State Street as well as uh, Valerio Street. The existing uh, balcony that projects out of the south side of the building now is somewhat eliminated and completely concealed within the parapets because before it, it sort of stuck up a little and it was a little bit of an awkward condition. We've not raised the height of any of the elements. We really accomplished this by working within the building envelope on the ceiling heights and the structure. In addition, along State Street and really for the entire project, all of the mechanical equipment is completely screened below parapets, so there's no... Uh, visible equipment either on the street on the rooftop or on the on grade uh, location. Mr. Brody, can you hold on a minute? Can we see those previous plans that were? Um, so when you're talking about how it changed, it would be yes. nice to remember we, what we, we did. We brought see. a copy too, if, if if you want. We can. Yeah. We brought a copy. Nope. He's got little guys. Yeah, we have little ones. And, yeah. Okay. Uh, this, was, this was the set that was reviewed on June 25th of 08 yes, and then continued to the Planning Commission. Is that the set? Yeah, that's that's that the is the set I have. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's just take a look at. So where's that odd balcony that you were talking about? Well, it, it was more, the balcony was a little higher than this. It didn't show any elevation. I guess what I was trying to say was we, we've carefully made sure that it's screened and we're, we're showing that so it's really clear as part of the design development process going from a concept to a more refined design. You, you start to get a little more detailed information on the existing building. This trellis element's been added. These are plaster columns with the precast top and a heavy timber trellis. There's been some uh, mm -hmm. some refinements yeah. to the there's been some refinements to the access once again dealing with more specific grade information along the street to meet you know ADA accessibility from this you know, service door over here. And again, the height of this wall is why is it different? It's interesting. It's interesting because I th are those definitely the latest elevations? Uh, because see. the elevations that we had as part of the. Are those dated 2508? Yeah, 625. No, on the on the in the corner. 625 Yes. That's the that's right. what I have. So that was. That's the only one that I have for that date. It was a. We have one from the hall. June 11. It's right, interesting so. because the height of this wall on subsequent elevations from. Brian Cannell's office showed a higher wall at that location. And, and, and we're flexible with the height of this wall. That's not, that's not something that we're 100% married to. This stone wall here, we did meet, uh, we met and, re and reviewed the location of the bus stop. So if you look on the site plan, this is a small stone wall enclosure that would house the, you know, the 
the bus stop itself, and that shows on the site plan. I can turn back to that. So here, here's the shelter over here. Uh, another another aspect of the streetscape, can I move on, is there was an existing wall here, and that wall was more the result of the existing condition where it was there to screen headlights. Uh, your uh, commission had, dis had discussed the possibility of a green wall. We actually eliminated the wall. We felt, and the planning commission actually was very complimentary about that approach to really just totally enhance and continue the, the landscaping around the corner. And, and David Black can discuss in detail, but that shows up on the landscape plan. And, and I think I think the intent we felt the intent of the planning commission and, and also your commission was to really get more landscaping and not such a hard edge to pedestrian sidewalk. So looking at drawing L. Yeah. You have it there. All right. Oh. So. Rather than putting a wall right on the sidewalk and just greening it, we felt you know it was a better solution to really enhance and continue the pedestrian street streetscape experience around the corner. And I believe it was presented that way at the planning commission, and they really appreciated the way that the building engaged the street via the landscape. Mm -hmm. The landscape is truly a softening element to the entire design. We, there, uh, I'll go, go back, back to, to the it. elevations now, if that's okay. Mm -hmm. no, that's what we want to see. So this is the Valerio Street elevation. We have an extra door. Uh, there is an extra door. That extra door was provided for an electrical service. So this is an entire service wall, this section of wall. This provided access to the mechanical storage and this would provide access to the uh, to the electrical service area. Which I think enhances the design. I think actually it adds some maybe some additional articulation and works well with the light fixture that would be positioned outside of that location. And I think in a sense adds some extra interest to that particular elevation. Uh, any other qu questions regarding nope. this elevation? All right. One thing I should point out is uh, the along Valerio, and it sort of shows that would be in this corner. And if we look on, I think David's plan would be good. We did eliminate the wall along the walkway here. There is an existing fence, an existing uh, retaining wall that, because of the slope of Valerio <coughs> Street, the property steps. So we did. This was maintained to deal with the slope change, and we integrated the the trash enclosure into it. So basically, the trash enclosure is sort of buried into the back of this wall on this side, and we, we have a detail and cross section. The doors, you know, front and the side, and that would allow for you know easy access for the uh, trash haulers. But on, on the as far as the streetscape side goes, it's it has a trellis over it, and we can show the elevation and a plaster wall that sort of ties into the existing wall. What sheet is that on, Nigel? Uh, I'll show you that enclosure detail. So this is the trash enclosure. The existing retaining wall comes down uh, behind it, so it's somewhat nestled in. I think we have it. Is this where's the cross section through that? This is the cross section. Yeah. So that shows the. So this shows the relationship behind. as the grade is, is sloping up on Valerio. It's sort of tucked in there, and, and then. This shows the heavy timber trellis over the, the top of that particular. And that and, and that would be a plaster finished, you know, wall. Same same color as the building. The, the off white right. color. Okay. All right, now let's go back to the threes. Uh, let's go around to the 
also the rear of the building. Uh, this is the rear elevation. This is the existing. This is the, the uh, new building. This is sort of the rear entry from the parking lot. We've uh, addressed ADA considerations as far as the accessibility from the parking lot. We've incorporated a uh, trellis design that uses square plaster columns with the precast top and heavy timber trellis. Uh, once again, this low portion serves as sort of, for lack of a better term, sort of the neck between these two uh, masses. These windows, we have a detailed or deep recessed window. This is a 12 inch deep wall and it's got a chamfered recess in there. Once again, trying to keep the detailing very simple. Uh, this is a, and it's the same color, uh, plaster uh, cornice on top. And we, have, we can show you the details of these profiles. And I think it's sort of important to state that a sort of a, a refinement of the way the levels between the existing building and the new addition work, I think it's helped in sort of the proportioning of the entry arches to the building on, on both sides of the building, on the rear and on the State Street side. And I think that's sort of helped with the sort of the integration of a lot of these kind of trellis elements and uh, some of the articulation with the columns. Thank you. Yeah, it was very important in terms of the function in the building not to have to have level changes in the building uh, just due to the nature of the dialysis uh, patient. And this shows, this is the uh, north elevation over here, which is really the sort of the corner as you look, looking back uh, down. So, yeah, you're looking into the entry. The now, one, one the thing we... The between the buildings. Now, uh, the entry wall behind here, we did incorporate a just a precast wainscot along this wall that sort of picks up the wainscoting or picks up the precast top. So along the, the entry wall that's beyond the ramp, there is a, a detail that shows a simple precast base wainscot. And that's the only area we really use that detail at that entry. Uh, we've indicated a light fixture. I believe these are, uh, we have cut sheets on these fixtures, decorative fixtures. Uh, one of the comments from your commission was to go to a more decorative light fixture. We've tried to scale it appropriately uh, for the uh, massing and scale of the openings in the building. Uh, we've also reduced the lighting levels as compared to the existing parking lot to be sensitive to the uh, neighbors to the north or east. That, that fixture is included on the drawings, but this is the cut for the, uh, for the particular fixture that we're intending to use. I think it's important to state that this same light fixture is also the basis for the design of the uh, of the site lighting. Uh, right now on the site, there's quite a significant number of decorative fixtures. It's in a sense potentially see what you're talking about. I'm to potentially uh, overlit right now. What we've actually done and been able to achieve the necessary lighting for this type of parking is to actually reduce the number of uh, pole fixtures. We have one at the Valerio entry to the project. I can show that on the electrical plan. And we have one to the opposite side of the parking. The remainder of the lighting for the project is either achieved by wall-mounted fixtures that show on all these elevations, which again, as I said, is the same type. Or what we've also done is supplemented some of the lighting with lighting that you you don't actually see. We're putting step lighting in the uh, in the base of the walls, and I have cut sheets for those fixtures too. And just at the entry, we proposed two bollard fixtures, and they'd all complement sort of the window selection. Everything would be in a dark bronze, but this, these were the two light fixtures that were proposed at the State Street entry to the building. So if you go to that elevation, can we put that for the camera? Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. It would be this middle fixture. So what we have are the two column-mounted, uh, uh, bracketed fixtures, and then further out towards State Street, we're just proposing two, two bollard lights. Thank you. Um, I can show you those on the electrical plans if you'd like me to do that. But, uh, It says, study some resolution of the existing building entrance on State Street that respects both the symmetry and integration of any openings into the facade. How did you do that? 
Well, we we didn't really modify this. I don't know if they were talking about this window, putting a second window in. You know, we felt with the landscaping and the screen wall, it, it would de-emphasize it sufficiently. It's something we can consider. Let's go. I think, I think what's interesting is I think this is what, by and large, what was presented to Planning Commission following the presentation drawings to the uh, to the review board. Um, if you look at the if you look at the site plan. So you understand what we're mm -hmm. looking at. This this is that existing entry to the building. So I think what was proposed was to downplay this whole entry with the screen wall. This actually now serves simply as a, a means of egress for the building, uh, which is necessary just to get this to function it's from actually, a code standpoint. Yeah, it's actually a storage room, I think, adjacent to that too. Out, outside of here was basically right now what exists is the is a whole sortillo tile sidewalk, which is not not the most attractive thing that we're proposing that that be entirely removed and it was proposed also at the I, I believe it was discussed uh, possibly in review of this panel but also at the uh, planning commission uh, we're proposing completely reinstating that sidewalk to match the existing sidewalk okay. And I think I believe plan-wise, that's a storage room over there. So it it, it's, it truly is. It's not a significant entry to the building. Uh, I mean, we we chose not to try to put like a major window in the storage room, just for the sake of uh, symmetry there. But we're open to your comments, uh, of course. You know, on that. Yeah, subject. I had to step down on this project, so I'm just reminding those who were here that that was one of your comments. All right. I don't really know what it refers right. to. <laughs> Thank you. All right, and then uh, one last thing I'd like to point out, and then I think I'm, I would like to have David walk walk you through the landscaping because I think that's an important part of the uh, of design. So I'll go to the landscape plan as a segue. <coughs> uh, right now, this is there's existing mechanical equipment here that's being replaced. This is going to be totally uh, screened, so. And it's being replaced with much more efficient and quieter, much more energy efficient equipment and much quieter equipment. And this is completely screened. So getting back to my original comment, the existing equipment now is totally screened within this wall. And we've had to, we really had to work carefully to meet because of the levels in the building being kept uh, on one level. We had to really carefully sort out the, ver the myriad of ADA issue, which I think we all deal with. But I th what's nice is I think we've done it in a way that it, it doesn't feel like a, like a hospital ramp with guardrails. We've used low walls and, and architectural components and trellises to really soften it and not make it uh, in any way over utilitarian or over, you know, burdened with the uh, handrails and things. So, David, maybe you'd like to review, because I think the landscaping was an important component of the original choices. Sure. I, I would like to point out at the inter, or at the start that we did do a separate plan that um, addresses the disposition of existing and, and as well as trees to be removed, trees to remain and trees to be removed. Um, in summary, we're removing 12 trees and we're replacing or providing uh, 13 new trees, all 24s except for um, I think the quarter line, which is a 15 gallon. I'll show you what those are. Um, so we uh, we don't have a lot of uh, room, obviously, between the building face and the back of sidewalk, and so we sought to get a tree that had a, was more upright in character, and we've used that uh, both along State Street and and um, and along Valerio as well, and that's the Stenocarpus, the firewheel tree, which is a pretty popular street tree here in town. Um, we are adding a um, a Podocarpus, 24-inch box. Um, uh, in the parkway at this location, um, that is the street tree for Valerio. Um, let's see, these are 15 gallon cordyline, uh, more upright multi um, trees here. It's a very uh, narrow space, as you can see, and, and it's actually recessed uh, below the um, below the adjacent parking area. I will point out also that we are um, 
taken it upon ourselves to expand the parkway. This this shaded areas here are, is new parkway where it was paving. So, and we're and we're taking out the lawn in the interest of providing water conserving plants. We're taking out the existing lawn and using a carex in, in this parkway strip here. Um, the rest of the palette is, um, I think I know Robert's had a chance to look at it, but it's all water conserving. We have um, shrubs or like um, cape rush and and um, uh, formiums and uh, blue agaves. Um, again, here's another uh, um, Australis cordyline. And, uh, and in this vicinity here, the, 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 the uh, trash enclosure provides somewhat of a natural screen to the parking here. Um, but in addition to that, we've got uh, plants here like Lomandra um, in this location too with the, um, with the aloe. And these are all capable of getting four, four to five feet high here. So we, we feel confident that um, that will provide adequate screening at this location for these stalls here. Um, I, think, I think the, um, the uh, palette pretty much speaks for itself. The ground cover is Senecio, Carex. Um, we have a lot of Festuca here. Um, all all uh, water conserving plant materials consistent with uh, the requirements of the Planning Commission. Um, I should point out too that we do have, I mean, this is the proposed bus stop location. One of the prerequisites for it is, is to have a canopy tree at the bus stop, which we've provided at this location here. Um, all the existing um, uh, landscape uh, is part of the, uh, the existing structure here. So from here on up, it uh, will remain as is, and we've sort of uh, collaborated with the uh, the irrigation system to accommodate this area as well. And we've also maintained the existing yes. vegetated edge. Yeah, this yeah this is a raised uh, uh, retaining wall as um, as Jay has pointed out earlier, and I think this is a, a giant uh, uh, pittosporum, pittosporum undulatum hedge that will remain as as seen here for the most part. And I'm available Thank for you. any questions. Are you uh, yeah. just a minute? Can I ask for public comment? Is there any public comment? Seeing none, now let's open to questions from the commission. Mr. Adams. Yeah, just a simple question. Um, the ficus, uh, well, the creeping thing. Where, where's that going to go? On the uh, trash enclosure wall, yeah, primarily? It's shown on the trash enclosure. Okay. I just thought, well, we'd have a little green I see there. it. Okay. Any other questions? I do have one uh, yes. half question, half comment. By adding another door here, You've eliminated a major parking. I'm, I'm sorry, major landscape feature against a wall that really has no landscaping against the building except for that. And when we get back into the architectural drawings, I'll, I'd like to talk about that. But I, I think that la that planter or having it one way or another against the building is very important. Thank and you. I don't know in your to answer your observation to I mean, Jay pointed out that there is a wall there. It's sort of um, here, here. This becomes sort of a little enclosed patio space. So this is what, how tall? Five, six feet? Uh, that's six feet tall. Six feet tall here too. It's basically privacy for the. Uh, my point being, you won't be you won't be reading the building elevation, um, except for the wall in front, which is landscape. So. Just for I'm that. talking about the wall from here to here. I understand. Okay. okay. I have a comment. Yeah. Yes, yeah. thank you. Yeah, not just a question. And, and I, I, I maybe you can see it here. I know that you put a, a, a nice, um, you paid this in order to put a couple of uh, bicycle parking spaces, mm -hmm. right? And I was kind of wondering if, if, if you thought of a, a way, a more economical way to, to minimize the bicycle parking. Like, mm -hmm. usually they are like this, the city has the standards, you can accommodate them there. And then, so this could be all landscape. I, I wonder how how was your how did your thinking work I, out, or, or, or the no, or the city I, required I think, to do that? I don't think we would have. Uh, I don't. We'd ha I, we wouldn't have a problem with that being stated as landscape and moving those. Uh, that was not the city requirement that the spaces be in your property rather than you know usually. So this, that's what I'm asking is that that was not a requirement. I, I don't believe so. I mean, if, if it's subject of the planning staff signing off on that, I think it would, I think that would be a, that's a good suggestion. It would really improve I the I mean, it was base the there. location that was shown on the original design, and we have basically taken that on board. Uh, right. I actually see no reason why that couldn't become a landscape area and reduce the landscape. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Well, I have my usual question. Where yes. 
Um, Louise, it's, it's our point of connection for the irrigation system is a, mm. is at a water meter here on Valeria, and the backflow would be in this in this planter here. And obviously, we'd endeavor to screen it with shrubs. Okay, I hate those things myself. I have a few buildings where it well, drives me crazy. Really nice projects where it's everything's looking great, and one of those is quite threatening. I have one more question. And that yes. is, what is the trellis design of which you have several now? We can show you. I'd like to show you the details on that, Commissioner Sharp. It's it's. Uh, I mean, the design is a simple. It's a square. Uh, it's going to be a square plaster. It's it's basically an 18-inch square plaster column with a precast top. And what we're proposing is there's a main beam element that cuts back to the wall of the building, so those occur at every column. That's a fairly substantial lumber, that's an 8x14, so... Um, and then what we're proposing is then a heavier lumber, which is a 6x12, and then that uh, comes down ultimately to the main sort of trellis canopy, which is in 4x8, and I think that's stated on the detail elsewhere okay. within the set. I would like to say that we have considered a lot of the details within the set. I don't know whether you'd like me to talk through a lot of those details and how they're sort of consistent with the original design. Um, you know, we've looked at basically all of the parapet elements, the heights, we've looked at the mechanical screening. I have cuts on the mechanical equipment if we'd like to discuss that that shows how they're fully screened by the uh, parapet walls that are over the main body of the building. Uh, you know, how some of these screen walls work around uh, the existing mechanical equipment and serve to kind of integrate well with the parking and a sort of a pedestrian flow at the back of the building. We have considered all of the lumber sizes on the drawings, the window selections, the door selections. Well, I'll um, assume, yes, if you got to that detail level that you did. And I'm sure some of us are looking at the details, so I think there's no reason for you to go through it right now. Are we um, ready for comments? All right. Who would like to start? I'd like to start. I just want to say this landscape palette is wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. It's everything you hope for a commercial building and rarely see. Um, great choices all around. Uh, hardy plants. The, Louise, I did check the back close screen. It's, there's going to be a... a uh, flax, New Zealand flax in front of it. And uh, good choices for the spaces, very drop tolerant, very tough. Um, uh, the only comment I have about the irrigation plan is uh, just to mention that the uh, controller has to be, make sure it's a weather, spec is a weather smart with, uh, there's a, a couple sensors on there. Uh, just look at that equipment. But basically this, this is, um, everything you hope for in a landscape, and uh, I really am appreciated uh, of the landscape architecture here. Thank you. Yes. I just have a couple of things. Uh, okay. We use anodized aluminum on the main entrance. We don't use anodized aluminum usually in the district. They are clad windows. Um, I mean, obviously, you were thinking that from more durability standpoint. I think the fact that... Well, you referred to them as, as anodized aluminum, and what I saw in your sheet looked like the yes, typical it is, old it, it is anodized... A, it, is, it is, I might add, a storefront entry for the... I understand that, but we can don't I, usually accept This is not a dialogue. Oh, They're giving her comments, it, and then... It's usually you. not... It, well, it isn't accepted in the district. Um, and the other thing I have a problem with is the ramp in the front. It... it is just a bald ramp and usually uh, when we approve a, a ramp that's out in the front like that they, they, the, the ramp is there but there's a wall next to it which maintains the same height all the way across and I think that usually is visual and I, I, I think that's more acceptable visually and um, uh, I notice it comes out in front of the main entrance, just part way. Is there any way to avoid that? 
questions you may answer. Oh, oh I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, that was a question, and I... Well, we <laughs> I should have done that earlier. Thank you. Yeah, one thing I'd like to clarify is that we, we kept this under 5%, so it's not a ramp. It doesn't require handrails. It's more of a, it's like a sloped sidewalk. So it, it's, I, I understand that. So it's, uh, it's 4.5%. Uh, let's, we can turn to the elevation. I, mean, I think actually the object is to downplay it behind the landscape screen. But, yeah, let's go to the elevation. So, uh, you know, I, I, I believe, and, and we can look at David's landscape plan, but I believe we have, land, we have I think we have landscaping in front of that. I don't think, this is a bare elevation, I think, when the landscaping it grows in, I don't think you'd really, I don't you, I don't think you'd see or perceive that sloped sidewalk behind there. No. Uh, maybe the object. Could, what paper is? Yeah, yeah. <coughs> uh, um, uh, so, so we have landscaping, and it, it, it's just a curb. It's not a, uh, a raised ramp. So, uh, I, I can understand, yeah, on the bare elevation, but uh, you know, we think the landscaping is going to conceal it nicely, as a, as opposed to bringing a full height wall right. in front of a sidewalk. Okay. Right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Sharp, do you wish to? Yeah, I'm going to get back to the uh, <clears throat> double doors here. It's, it's quite possible to retain one door and have a hallway into the building with the electrical uh, room off to the side and regain that landscaping that David has shown on his plan, which I think is very important in that particular uh, indentation of the building. Um, you mentioned you have cuts for the air conditioning units on the roof. I just want to make sure that... Uh, the parapet is high enough. More than half the time, architects are fooled by uh, a number of reasons. The platform height or the equipment gets upgraded and so forth. And it's nice to leave a little cushion there on the parapet height for yourself. Um, and last item are the colors. I hope the building is going to be monochromatic in I'm talking about the plaster colors and not painting indentations bright colors and inappropriate in my estimation uh, colors in some of these recesses which uh, tend to take away from the building design I believe that's it thank, thank you. you Ms. Murray um, I have not met to add, I was when uh, Louise had covered some of the things I was concerned about the aluminum. Thank you. So I'm okay. All right. <coughs> Mr. Adams, I think, has already expressed. Mr. Fugeau. Yes, I, I agree with the comments made. Um, re regarding the sidewalks, I, I wonder uh, it's something, it's a question comment. If, if there are a few sidewalks, that uh, one leading to that door and the other one's in the back, it's called a walk, uh, if they can be narrower, there seem, to be, uh, there seem to be like six feet or five or six. And I know sometimes when you come out of the landing, it has to be a certain dimension. But I wonder, in general, if you can revisit it you know, next time when you come for final, you know, if you can uh, just take a look at those walkways, if they can be narrower. Yeah. Because they're secondary, they, are, they don't serve any major purpose, so they can you know, be reduced. I like your project very much. I like the way you, you resolve the details. You had uh, I looked over all of them. They're, they're, they're very nice. Uh, a, a comment on, on the trailers and timber sizes. They, um, they tend to be a little bit uh, rectangular, like you have a 6 by 12, 4 by 8. And in general, more traditional timber, as you know, is more square. So it will be like an 8 by 10 instead of a 6 by 12, or a 6 by 6 instead of a 4 by 8. So, which is more like, it um, doesn't look like more than, uh, you know, it ages the building naturally. And um, I have the, also the comment, we can uh, study ways to minimize the, uh, the additional concrete in, uh, on the, uh, where, they, where they have the parking for the bikeways to see if you can move them now that you don't have the bus stop to move them out there so that we can maybe add another tree or something that would look nice. And, uh, and, um, one question about the uh, the um, uh, light fixture. I understand that you use the, the ILA 
uh, fixtures because they are practical, they are not too expensive and so forth. But I think the, um, in the end, just may want to use it something a little bit better. I mean, a little bit more important, a little bit, I don't know, a little bit nicer. I'm not sure if you want, I know you want to be consistent, but it just seems like the entrance you, you had. Hello. <laughs> Mr. DeForest, can you turn it off when you are in here? Thank you. Yeah, uh, uh, perhaps you can, you can use a, uh, at least in the one face in the State Street, I think it's, it's something, such an important thing. Um, I, 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 I like the way you finally resolve the closure of the main entrance. I mean, it, uh, it's not great, but it's the best you can do, and I understand that, and the height of the wall is fine, and I think you resolve all that pretty well. So, I, I, if those are the, maybe there will be a motion, but I, I, I would make a motion for a preliminary approval with those minor details to, to, to go to the consent calendar. <laughs> And, and, the, and I think uh, the chair has all the comments, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you wish me to repeat them? Uh, well, I'm yeah. sure Gabrielle has the comments then. Uh, well, we have a motion for preliminary with a second. And Who's, who seconded? Um, Ms. Murray. Okay. Uh, in two weeks. In two weeks. I know the doctors are anxious to get this project on, so okay, they have patients, percent. you know, Two waiting percent. for it. Yeah. And do you wish a summary of the comments, or did you get them? I got some of the comments, mm -hmm. but I don't know if you want to include all of them. Uh, I, 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 I can yes, can there we go. Okay, uh, to, uh, one, to study the way to minimize the width of, of, of the uh, secondary sidewalks. Two, to um, restudy the lumber sizes to be more square instead of rectangular uh, for the trellises. Uh, Three, to, uh, to study ways to minimize the, the, the concrete for the bicycle parking uh, facing State Street and, and increase the landscape area. The what? No, no, but it, that was a mistake. I think when, when Mr. Blatter spoke, he, he mentioned by mistake anodized aluminum. But I look, all of the plants say wood clad, and all the details say wood clad. I think it was just the. Uh, it's on the plan. Yeah, the plants. I was just looking at the, at the, their, their sample. Yeah, we'll, we'll correct that. We, we get a color sample, but it will be a wood clad window and roll. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. that's our intent. And the entry doors are what? Well, they would be the wood. Cl uh, the, sorry, the entry doors are a traditional. I believe it's a I forget the name of the company. New traditional company that manufacture uh, kind of a rusticated uh, vertical Plank. stick door with the. Uh, uh -uh. What's the word I'm looking for? Clavos. In the doors. Okay. okay. And what we were looking at was a uh, uh, an oil uh, dot. Finish hardware for that also shows the is going to continue the motion comments. Yeah, uh, I think we have a couple more, right? Yes. One is to restudy ways to uh, to uh, recreate the um, the uh, the planter facing Valeria Street that now is displaced by a pair of doors. The other one is to, to make sure that the parapet height hides the, uh, the, the mechanical equipment. So that would be a, a task of the uh, consent calendar <laughs> to verify that. And to uh, restudy a way to uh, enhance the, uh, the aspect of the uh, light fixtures, uh, the main light fixtures facing State Street. And if I will add Mr. Sharp's comment about his desire for a more monochromatic palette than you might have been thinking of. We're thinking of a total monochromatic palette. Okay. And I think I will also add Mr. Adams' comment, which was very positive, that this was uh, a landscape that was everything that you could hope for in a commercial <laughs> planting. Well, let's not go overboard here. Well, I'm just repeating <laughs> just Mr. <like> Adams. <laughs> oh, okay. Madam Chair? Madam Chair? Yes. I don't know if we got, did you get the comment on the door? Did, did you want that as a comment to the motion? Oh, did you mean the double doors that were one, one to be removed or the? The door that Mr. Gummersall was describing. Oh. I, 
I, Nigel, the door you were describing, the, the, which well, door was that? The doors that I was describing, I want to be clear, was not the main entry door. The main entry door would be a wood-clad okay. glazed yeah. door. The, the remaining doors that are around the project all are right. all in the clavos wood vertical panel. It's just it's that's not part of the motion. Correct. Right? Yeah. Okay. No. Just decide. All those in favor of the motion? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? That motion carries. I'm going to... Question. We're coming back for... If we were to bring the changes with all the final details, what would it take to get final approval so we can move forward? We're Just come back in two weeks with the set of right. drawings, including everything that they just summarized after the motion. And, and I wanted to ask Commissioner Sharp one question mm -hmm. regarding this door. Yeah. If we were able to make one of these a single door and maybe extend the screen wall with planting in front because the electric company is really tough on us. They they want to get rid of panels from the outside, but I think we could shrink this and diminish it and maybe even extend the screen wall to bring the planting up to diminish the visibility of those doors. Would that be, is that a possible, acceptable, you know, compromise? We're just fighting a lot of, because of the dialysis equipment, we're really fighting a lot of technical limitations here. So that's the store, goes to the storage room. So it needs to be built in there. Right? Yeah, well, this is the electrical. Uh, electrical. To, my thought I was wish Edison would let us put the meter inside. To have a pair of doors, and off of that hallway going back to the water storage would be an entrance to the electrical. The electrical that, that panel. That can happen internally, just to be clear. The, yeah, the Edison was saying, no, they want it on the outside. The electrical equipment. And so if you had just an opening here, with the doors and then this door back four feet or so, whatever width you need, six feet, that would do it also. I'm sure you'll be able to resolve this. All right. I'm going to close this Sorry. and um, right. I'm going to take a break for five minutes because I understand we need time to, oh, it's all right. Very good. Then we are on to the next item, which is item number 434 West Victoria Street. I just need to, I need to keep this set, Jay. Sorry. And my apologies, we are almost a half an hour late. So let's get going. So again. Oh. We will have the. Um, you have the Apparently. I just gave the tour. Mm -hmm. Again, we're going to have the compatibility analysis on the mass scale. That was that right. last remaining thing. Okay. Oh. Okay. Hello. Um, Will you please introduce yourselves for the record? Brian Cornell, Joe Andrelitis on my right. Tim Hazeltine, Post Hazeltine Associates. Thank you. Pamela Post, Post Hazeltine Associates. And Marge uh, Caffarelli apologizes for not being here. She is home sick uh -oh. in San Francisco, so she's streaming online. So I say I'm hi sure to Marge. I'm sure she is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she is. Uh, well, we're sorry, Marge. Um, I will read the comments from our last to remind ourselves. The major improvements that have been made to the project were recognized. At Victoria Street and the proposed market, explore manipulating the chamfer of the building in order to open up the view to the Arlington Theater. Open up the view to the rear of the Arlington on Chapala Street by manipulating the corner of the market through the use of a curve or a chamfer. The third floor bridge needs revisiting and there is concern with regard to the three-story massing and I believe we changed that in the minutes on the east and west. Okay. Shall I? Fermina yes. wasn't here the last time. I, did you see the, the changes that we made? Uh, But, uh, I did well, I'll show you. Plans. I'll show you I here. The new plans for so, um, 
after you all made the last comments and indicated that we were close, and we appreciate that, um, we went back and Marge looked very hard at what she felt that uh, she could do, and we made our recommendations, and I will show you what we have done. This, of course, is the existing Vaughn site. And just as a reminder, this is where we were in the first three meetings. And the last meeting two weeks ago is when we made the fairly significant change to repositioning, creating the, the passageway through from Victoria and creating a new courtyard. Um, am I, there we go. Here um, at the Arlington. And this is the change that we're showing you today. It, when I look at the first floor, there's not a significant change. I'm going to flip back. Um, you'll note that we've made a little bit of a change at the back portion of the market. And we've also, going back again, we've made some revisions um, here in this corner. Um, I will tell you that, um, Don, you mentioned the last time about liking three or four degrees. We checked, and uh, Casa de la Guerra is, is three degrees. Um, I have left this at two degrees because, not because I'm stubborn, um, no, 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 I'm not. I know you may think I am, but let me, I'm, I'm moving ahead of myself here. I'm sorry. You know how I'm challenged. But if I shifted this an extra degree in the direction that I am, what it would tend to do is to sort of move this corner in the wrong direction. And it, it, it seems like this is the right angle. We talked to Tim and Pam about this, and I think that, you know, we're, we're one degree off, which isn't isn't too much. The big change is at the third floor. So take a look at that. We've made the changes at the front portion here and along this side by basically pulling those corners back. So I'll show you that view again. And then from the roof plan perspective, I think it's probably the most dramatic. You can see how we've basically carved those corners, pulled the, pulled, we've reduced the size of the units and pulled the corners back as well creating these indentations which help quite a bit in terms of how you perceive that mass. Going through the elevations real quick, um, I've modified the bridge and we'll talk about that a little bit further in a moment, but you can kind of see how that, how we have pulled that massing in um, from that central passageway. Um, from the side of the building, you can just really decipher slight revisions. We've tried to bring all of the roofs down as, as much as we possibly can, and so you can see that effectively as we go through this. This is a section. This is before and after. And I do want to emphasize that all of this is going to be below 40 feet, so that is the 40-foot line when measured from natural grade. This um, is now looking at, I'm going to go take you through the perspective views. You talked about the bridge, and what I've done is I have minimized the bridge and put open railing. This obviously is something that we're going to want to study extensively. To do away with the bridge, just you, so you know, it would require another elevator and a whole other set of stairs, um, which, is, which is prohibitive at this point in terms of both space and dollars. So, but you can see, particularly when you look at these two ends, how pulling those roofs back have made a big difference as far as minimizing um, the mass of the project. Then as we move into that, again, I think the, you know, I, I want to emphasize the, the importance of this vista that you're going to get looking back at the Arlington. And of course, our intent is that this lobby space be able to be open. I've taken those beautiful wrought iron gates <laughs> that I had the last time off because those need to be designed as well. But this shows the big difference between the lighter bridge and what we had proposed um, before. From this vantage point, um, you can see how pulling um, that roof back makes a huge difference in, in terms of the uh, exposure on the Arlington. And then, Don, we also looked at pulling the entrance back, which you've mentioned for a couple of meetings, and that's what happens when you, when you do that. And I will tell you, this is an area where Marge felt very strong when we showed her this. She said, look, this doesn't do anything as far as opening up the Arlington, and I lose additional square footage, and frankly, for me, the market is already, you've already made it smaller than I ever wanted it to be, and so that was 
that was vetoed. But I, I do think it's important to note, let me go back to that again, that again, that although that does open up um, the, the view into that plaza slightly, it really doesn't do much, it, it, if anything, as far as, as far as opening up views to the, to the Arlington. And the square footage of this market is very important. I'm sorry that Michael's not here. One thing that we did do was to reduce this back area and move it slightly, as well as chamfer the corner, which was recommended. And obviously, anything we can do to minimize that back area and, and move it back, it will tend to open up um, that, that, that view um, towards the rear of, of the Arlington. And then finally, along that Paseo, um, this is the revised condition. We've pulled some of those mass, masses um, back. Um, and then we also eliminated this wood balcony, which, you know, I, I, obviously we're here reviewing massing and size, bulk, and scale to send this project onto the Planning Commission. You all are going to have the purview. We're going to come back with well, many times as far as the detailing of this, and I hope that you trust our ability to make sure that the, the detailing of this. But this becomes very important. Don, you were concerned about... Um, this view, and by pulling that mass and roof back, you really expose, obviously, um, those crenellations or scallops that are on um, the Arlington Tower. So, Joe, if you'll escape and open up that movie that should be on the desktop real quick. I'm just going to take you, it's up on the top there. I'm going to take you through this real quickly, and I'm going to probably need to operate this. So, now this is too hard with the mic. I could hum a few bars of a song, which might help. <laughs> Obviously, that's the, the bridge revision. And again, the detailing of this at the end of the day is going to be extremely important, but I do think the lighter bridge. Um, does help open up those vistas to the Arlington. You know, as we swing around here, I think it really is, this really emphasizes, again, the point we've made all along as far as the view corridors, how the one-story building is really blocking the view of, of the Arlington. And at this point, with the exception of the fact that you see it through our new plaza, there's very little... Um, um, three story that is is visible beyond that parapet, which has been that um, that view corridor line that we have talked about so much. But here you can see again how pulling these roofs back in this area have really helped to open up the views of the Arlington. We haven't done anything to the market from the third review. But I do want to point out again this, you know, how valuable I think this little break in the building will be as far as those vistas to the Arlington. Obviously the Joe Knowles panels and um, we haven't forgotten about your discussions of the detailing of those columns. It'll be very important that those be appropriate. <clears throat> as we swing around you know, pulling that wall back has helped to open up the rear of the Arlington, and obviously from this vantage point, um, you get a full view of it. Now, a few times I'm going to collide with buildings here. I apologize. Um, here, this is just a computer rendering. This plaza level will all be the same, even though it looks like it's at two different levels. Um, that's just a function of the computer model. But then, of course, I think the big value of this whole scheme is the opening up of this, of this new courtyard uh, off of the Arlington. Looking back down that Paseo, sort of speed that up a little bit. 
that is the, the entrance with the stairs up uh, off of that Paseo, and then finally going back to Victoria. So um, this is our fifth review. Obviously what our goal is, as you know, is to be able to get uh, going towards Planning Commission. Uh, and I'm going to put it before the Commission, obviously, that I hope based on what we have done um, that we that you all can make the compatibility fi findings or the guidelines when i look through these you know very quickly number one does the project comply with the city charter and municipal code requirements it does there are no mods with the exception of the bonus density mod which of course were required to have um, via the inclusionary zoning um, compatible with the architectural character of city and neighborhood. Um, I think, I know it is. I know that when it's all done and we've detailed this, it will absolutely meet that standard. Uh, the question is appropriate size, mass, bulk, and scale. And then, of course, um, the sensitivity of the adjacent landmark. I think Pam and Tim have spoken to that before, but um, I know that they feel that these changes have improved it. I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on that particular finding. Well, not, not to re repeat everything we've said over the last four meetings, but we do feel the project does meet the sensitivity requirements as outlined initially in the HSR and then as further revi uh, refined as this has been reviewed by the Historic Landmarks Commission. And um, just to go back to the Historic Structures Report, we do feel that the building's scale and massing is compatible with the Arlington Theater as detailed in the guidelines, which state that the scale of the project should be appropriate for the scale of the historic structure that it's adjacent to. And since the Arlington's a large building, um, that the two and three story massings are appropriate um, for that particular context. Thank you. And then of course your final two findings of uh, public views, Ocean Mountain, I don't think we've done anything there that is an issue and we've actually in this new scheme, um, the open space has been increased from the first three, uh, the first three reviews that you all saw. Thank you. Pretty good, huh? Less than 30 minutes. I wasn't even checking. Oh. <laughs> I am going to ask for public comment. Come to forest. Uh, this this is coming along <laughs> finally. Uh, on the bridges, I, I appreciate they're getting less uh, bulky. Is there any way? And I would like to see a less arch-like structure on the bridge next to the market. That that could emulate the bridge that you now having on the Paseo, the central Paseo up to the uh, Arlington balcony. And I was wondering, is there any way the bridges could be less bulky? Even even the one there now, do they need arches? Could they be just walkways? Because I think these these arches tend to block the view of the Arlington. Secondly, on the I would like to see the rear of the Chapala. I mean, of the Arlington, the, which is quite wonderful. Uh, the rear of the Arlington be maximized. Does there need to be a? Does the wall have to be a wall? On the west, on the east side of the entrance to the parking garage. I know you don't want people falling, falling down there. But could it be a fence rather than a wall, so you could see more of the Arlington? Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to ask for questions from the commission. Ms. Murray. Uh, talk about the height of the elevation on, on Victoria Street, please. You already all switched to the plan, sorry. Uh, mm -hmm. I just wanted to make sure she was switched to the plans. Mm -hmm. yeah, the Victoria Street. 
so yeah just 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 go through okay so what, what this in general this story is how how many oh. high if you have that, if you have it, that, so pro it probably would be easiest to look on the plan right. first. Yeah. You want to know the exact yeah, heights? It's, it's how, yeah, exact heights and how they move on to the 40. I think I marked from, it. From the lowest to the highest. And I think I've got I, I guess all I want to understand where the lowest and where the highest. On these sections. So basically what, we're, what we have is an average of the one-story buildings are about 18 feet, which the existing Vaughns, by the way, is up at around 21. Um, the 24 feet is the second story plate height, which, so that's what's at the street height. And then we're, we're holding everything that is three stories under the 40 feet. Um, we did lower the, the plate heights at the, at the first floor and at the, at the upper floor so that we're planning on doing vaulted ceilings at the, at the third floor and using conventional plate heights there and are planning on, on essentially nine foot ceilings at the first floor. So if you're going from Victoria Street up this way, let's say this is about 25 feet, 25. Well, it's 24 at the plate, at the, and of course, you know, from a, from a visual standpoint, if I'm across the street on Victoria and I'm looking, I'm going to see that, that plate and probably not the ridge. Mm -hmm. um, but just for your uh, oh, information, the ridge is at about 32 feet. Mm -hmm. And then the rest is... Is that. That's 40. the 40-foot. That's the 40-foot line. Okay. Are there any other questions? All right, let's go to comments, please. I know Mr. Pujo likes to go last on these, doesn't he? No? You'd like to go first? Good. If he could set the tone, perhaps. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, Again? Yes. Mm. I always like this project. I like the main things of the project. Uh, I don't want to repeat them. I think I made the comments on the first uh, presentation, the, uh, the concept of the underground parking, the... Uh, the location of the commercial, the amount and quality and, and type of housing provided. I think these are very nice elements. I like the location of the corner store. I like all of it, and I think it's, it's up to the rest of the, of the commission to see that to make the other findings of, of, of compatibility with the, with the landmark, which I had already made before. So that each time is getting better, but I, I have absolutely no problems with the, to make all of the findings listed over there. Thank you. Anybody else want to make comments? Uh, I, I find it uh, very important uh, that you move that third story back. Uh, it looks like a patio along that pis along the um, is it the eastern paseo, easternmost paseo, paseo. Um, I, I find that really valuable. That was absolutely needed. We, you know, as this po project marches forward, we just have to be uh, careful about what landscape choices are made there. So we do keep those views open, but a very important view and, and really a good change to the project. I'm still having um, major problems with that bridge. Um, it it. It seems um, at, at the central paseo in, in particular, I, the, the one at the market, I don't mind as much. I'm not having problems with that bulk or mass, but I'm, I'm still having problems with the bridge at the central paseo. As you look from Victoria Street in, into the Arlington, uh, um, Kelton DeForest was right. It, it somehow has to be reduced. I'm just, just not happy with that. Maybe that's a detail item. But um, so far, uh, I mean, what I see today, I'm supportive of, of this project. I think it's come a long way. Thank you. I'm supportive of the mass bulk and scale, with the exception of the bridge element. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes. Well, I think, I think the architect has done what we asked, and I think setting that third floor back is really, really valuable. Um, the bridge, uh, you know, I 
would rather see it lighter, but I don't know how to do that, sort of making it out of glass or something. Um, uh, there are there are details uh, that I would like to comment on when we get down to the to the you know the a little farther in this project. But I find that um, this is very sensitive to the Arlington, much more so than other things we've seen uh, near near land uh, landmarks, and so. Um, I am willing to support the size, bulk, and scale. Thank you. Madam Chair, Sharp. Um, obviously we all appreciate the changes you've made along the way and responding to our ideas and requests and so forth. I find the bridge acceptable, I must say, far superior to last week's bridge and initial designs had a wooden bridge, as I recall, glue lamb, which I didn't feel was tied the building together. It was just a, a foreign element in the middle of two buildings. And I, I think this is a, a good solution. Proportions are, are good and so forth. So I, I support that. I really appreciate the uh, you responding to our requests for reducing the third floor mass on the east and west elevations. Uh, I personally agree with the comments that have gone before me here and uh, find the project compatibility findings and analysis uh, acceptable. I, I don't agree with your uh, analysis of the marketplace chamfer <laughs> rotating about one point and not the whole thing moving back, but that's another issue. and. Uh, all in all, I think it's turned out to be an acceptable project to go to the Planning Commission. Thank you. Ms. Murray? Um, I do appreciate all of the work that has got into this project. This is not an easy project. It is especially not easy for me. As you know, the structure report was a narrow, narrow approval. There was four to three. And I am still... Um, um, I am. I reviewed your plans very closely this afternoon before I came to this meeting. I also have um, traveled around town to look at all the major churches around town. This building, even though it's a theater, is based on the medieval church. And so I was looking at all those contexts around town. And I am still concerned about uh, specifically number four and number six, the sensitivity to the adjacent landmark. And it's not so much, you know, the individual design and the design. And, you know, you're a gift of architects. I am not worried about how you can make a building to be compatible. It just the, it's the cumulative impact of the density of this project, of the predominantly three-story buildings that is the predominant sense of this project, that still no matter what, how, however you massage it, without any reduction of the number of, of, of the, the, the units or anything like that, it will still have an impact. There is just, to me, there is going to be a new impact on that landmark. Uh, ultimately, it will be. And, and uh, uh, it will definitely diminish the, uh, the existing integrity of that monument of that of that uh, of that building, and uh, so the sensitivity to me is is I'm still concerned about that. Uh, I I still think the envelope could still be pursued. Uh, also, number six, which is the open space, and that my comment of the sensitivity to the adjacent landmark is also connected to number six, which is the you know, appropriate amount of open space and landscape. You know, as presented, the amount of landscape is 5.6%. The amount of, of hardscape is 29, let's see, 29.7. So over, overall, landscape is very small, is 5.6. Paved areas is 29.7%. And so when, you, when, when I think of the, the cumulative impact of all those percentages 
And then I look at the project and it says, um, there's uh, the applicant is asking for a zoning modification for the residential units to, to encroach into the interior yard setback. And given all those things, I'm just still thinking that there's, no matter what, there's going to be a great impact of those three stories buildings. How you've done a great job in trying to minimize the height, the scale, and I, I, I will just continue to uh, look at that, and specifically the part of this new, new project that uh, the old project, the other project had a, a, a very nice feature that is no longer here, and that is the corner of let's see, that would be Victoria, near, near the Paseo. There, let's see, where's the, this corner here? Where, where am I? This is, yeah, the, this corner. This is the corner. Yeah, remember in the, old, in the other version, earlier version, this, there was an opening here. And now this, to me, this is just another, it just comes right to the edge, and it's just not, you don't get the same feeling as you do at this end. And I just feel that is one opportunity to further open the, the sense of, of this building. The, this is wonderful. I think that this is just a great thing you did opening that, so at least you have this view there. And I also, you've seen this many times, but there's a, there's a, a picture, let's see, of the other Edwards Plunkett building and the medical office. And they have a really interesting kind of treatment of the, the arch drew. So that might be something to look at and, and probably look more into the Plunkett work and really find ways how he would have built this building. Uh, so you would get a more sense of how it fits to the Arlington, not just size, bulk, and scale, but also these, these important details. But I, will, I am still concerned about, as I will repeat, the sensitivity number four and number six are, are still my two issues. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to summarize the comments. Overall, I believe everybody agrees that you have been sensitive and responsive to our requests and our comments, that there is continuous improvement of this project and we'd like to send you forward with positive comments to the Planning Commission. The majority of the Commission finds that there is compatibility, that we are, that you are um, compliant with our compatibility analysis that we are required to perform. There are still concerns among some members about issues which will be further resolved as you go down the line. I think that should do it. I, I would make a motion for uh, definite continuance then with those comments. I'll second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? That motion. Ah, Ms. Murray is opposed. Planning Commission. Ms. Murray is opposed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good Thank luck. you very much. I appreciate it. I think this is an example of projects getting better when, through the yes. process. I just want to say, you're feeling better, Marge. Yes. I think Marge just went and had a large... Uh, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Next item, I believe, is also... Will she, be she, she texted me. What did she say? She may comment on record if she wishes. Let's see. <laughs> wow. Thank you, Commissioners. I think I'm starting to feel better already. <laughs> Thank you very much for your support today. Wonderful. We're very happy. And Brian is star, are we Yes. <laughs> All right. She'll me with the whiskey. Yeah. The next review is uh, 633 East Cabrillo Boulevard. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think we can handle it? <laughs>
315. Yes. Yes. Well, it's Cornell. It's Cornell. Yeah. So he's, yeah. That's why I put them right next to each other. Yeah. Make him self late. Oh. Excuse me. From, from big to small. Yes. Do you have you a, can do, do you have everything. All sets? Well, this is a funny little. I don't know. If, I don't think staff has anything to say, do they? Susan, do you have anything you wanted to say on this? Okay. No, that was. Okay. That was so, introduce yourself Deborah, for the Brian record Cornell. again. Thank you. Or Pete Lawson, do you want me to get Pete for you? I don't. Uh, not unless he wants okay. to. Okay. Thanks. So this is um, at the. Thank you. This is at the west end of where the parking lot is, off of um, near where the new hotel will maybe someday <laughs> be built. And um, the double tree dropped a little temporary building onto the parking lot. There it is. And for a tennis shop. Mm. And they, I think an inspector came along and said, gee, what's that? And they never got a permit to do it, so they called me. <laughs> I know. Um, the building is actually, I mean, it's not something that is um, stellar, but it's, it's pretty darn simple. And my thought is this, as a concept notion, is obviously to take it out of the parking lot. There is an area in through here that is presently just unused lawn area. And let's see if I have a good photo of it. There it is right there. So the proposal is to put it, let me just make sure I'm looking correctly. Yeah. The proposal is to drop that little building basically where those lawn chairs are now in the lawn, obviously removing the lawn. And I will then, you know, if this concept seems acceptable to you, we're going to go ahead and do a landscape plan for this. And any recommendations you have relative to that would be helpful. But to add a trellis off of the west side, because obviously sun control is would be important there. And this is a very simplified version. I think the trellis will need to be amplified or or detailed much nicer than what we're showing here now. But conceptually, to, to add that trellis to the side of this facing um, the court and get the building to disappear amidst that landscape. So put stuff on the trellis, vines, etc., plant around this so that the building kind of goes away. And that is the concept, yeah. Just any of those packets. That's, yeah, here you go. That's obviously just a couple of shots of the existing hotel, so you know what that looks like. Is there any public comment on this item? Seeing well, none. What, what does this thing look like? The, Questions? The, uh, existing, uh, it looks like the drawing. Oh, I yeah, it looks like the drawing. Is, yeah. is it plastered? Is, huh? is, it, is, it, is, it, is it plastered? It's plastered. So, and, yes. And this is the electrical system here. I mean, the, the, the main. Yeah. Well, that's the switch. That's yeah. the. That's the. Disconnect. Yeah. yeah. So hmm. you're moving that building over there. You're this moving. building, that building in that photograph is sitting right here, right so now, you're just on the asphalt. Or, so or the proposal is to move, move it here it and landscape the hell out of it, basically, and add the trellis and get it properly approved. May I ask, are you re uh, retaining these windows? I know. I'm yeah. sorry. I know. I mean, obviously, obviously, we're trying to do as as little to this building as we can. Um, which again, those windows, this by sitting here, this is a slight slope, so we, we're going to have to put some retaining in and bury it in the ground. And you know, there's a large hedgerow right here to where it wouldn't really ever be. I'll save my comments. But. <laughs> Can we yes. Shall we go to comments unless there are more questions? Very good. It's a small building, and I think we shouldn't use too much time for this. But I, I cannot approve it. I'm sorry. Yes. <laughs> That's it. I mean, like, uh, it, it, it can, well, the, the quality of materials, it doesn't meet the standards. Um, so either change the windows or, or wrap the whole, or build a thicker wall around it and recess the windows or do something with it. Uh, I, don't, I don't mind the size, bulk, and scale location and all that. But the, <laughs> But the, uh, 
you know, I don't even care much about the, the trailers. I mean, uh, if you have to spend more money on the building and less on the trailers or, or no trailers, I don't, but, but really kind of prove that at that location. I mean, uh, and, in, in the, uh, you know, Caprio Boulevard, basically. It's, <laughs> it's just an ISO. Thank you. Are there any additional comments? Yeah. Um, okay. You know, the trellis is, is uh, I don't see the reason for it. For this building, it's, it's too much. It could be ha half that width, maybe, or something that pops out. I just, it's getting very close to the tennis court fence, and it just seems like a dark hole. I, I don't think the trellis is a great idea. Yes. With a, uh, a proposal that meets the guidelines. Second the motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Abstain. That motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. One up, one down. Well, you know, I'll take the one up. Yeah. <laughs> How different would it have been if I had come in with this first? <laughs> Black mark yeah. yeah. This one's 34. Sorry, that's the last one. Well, at least it didn't take very long. Yep. So the next item is 700 East Annapamu Street. Oh. Oh, Joe. Is this ours or? Will you introduce yourselves for the record, please? Yeah, Joe Wilcox with KVZ Architects. And I'm Carl May Rose with Santa Barbara School Districts. Thank you. Ooh, sorry. Yep, it's a biggie. Wow. Is this concept? <laughs> There's really only one page inside. <laughs> L2. Oh, oh. I can't stand it. I can start off by giving you an introduction where the site is. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. do that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Santa Barbara High School. This is their main building. This is their main entrance. Mm -hmm. And this project started out as a waterproofing project because the basement of this building has been leaking for years. And in order to waterproof this, there's also some light wells. We had to grade down about 15 feet and basically obliterate this whole part of the site. This was AC paving before, mm. and we're going back redoing all the flat work that matches pretty much the same configuration except for the slopes in order to meet ADA. We're removing all the um, galvanized iron pipe rails and putting in ornamental handrails and we're going in with a whole new landscape plan. But since it's a landmark, the district, Carl Mayrose and the district would like this to show you. Thank you. And I brought photographs of the plants and I brought photographs of what it used to look like. It was pretty, pretty dismal. Let's get this over to the... Okay. <clears throat> mm. LT. Mm -hmm. So we're going back in with the exact same configuration as I said. Uh, in this photograph, you can see that this area here used to be AC paved because mm. I'm going to guess eight years, nine, ten years ago, they thought that that would, would uh, resolve the waterproofing issue, and it did not. Um, we're going to go back and build these walls in the same, and like I mentioned, we're going to go back in with ornamental handrails. We've changed the slopes of these to meet ADA, and this was also AC paving. It was basically all AC paving. Mm. And uh, when we got in construction, we found that these light wells didn't have any footings. So this has gone to DSA, and that's why it's a large set of drawings to redo the footing. Um, so I'm here to answer any questions about the landscape plan. It was done by Sam Maphis. I brought photographs of the plants. What's the, what's the planting plan? The yeah. landscape plan showing us what there we go. I see. Good. Good. Very good. Very good. Thank you. We're going back in with lawn Sorry. in this area to match lawn that's over here. And I've asked Sam to send me photographs of all the plants. And I can walk you through those as well if you like. And that's is there any public comment on this item? Seeing none, I'll come back to uh, questions from the commission, please.
Are there any questions? So, so uh, let's see. Any? Uh, what's the um, additional square footage of landscaping that wasn't landscaping before? I mean, well, the, did you? I haven't calculated, but again, I can yeah. tell you this was all AC paved. This Got was it. sand, and this was all AC paved. Okay. So we're taking a parking lot and turning it into a landscape garden. Yeah. Is this is this lawn used, walked on? This, uh, yeah, it can be walked on. It can be walked on, but would people use it at that location or uh, that long? This is the exact lawn? same configuration that the school has had since 1980 in terms of uh -huh. walk paths. And walk I, paths. I mentioned that here's a photograph right here. Uh huh. And this area is that. Uh -huh. Yes. Are there any other questions? Here's a. Here's another example where we're going to take these old galvanized yeah. pipers and all going to be ornamental handrails yeah. to match the building. Uh, uh, just a, yeah, have a, also uh, three uh, two point oh is, yeah. Yes, it has also the belt. Where, where does the uh, the the, the uh, ramp uh, railings go exactly? They go inboard. Oh, you can see in. the little little lines with the dots. Oh, oh I see. I the see. Wall, I see. And the, there was no way to, to slope it differently without any... Ramps. It's all gone. I mean, it had all be removed, and we're, we were down 15 feet as of two weeks ago. All this flat work had to go away in order to get down to the basement. Right, right, right. What I'm saying is the, uh, there's no way to change the grace to the right. No, there is not. In fact, these walls are not high enough to even attach the rails to the walls. These are low walls. So you'd ask the question about the details of it. Here we go. Solid stock, galvanized and powder coated, both. That's a district standard. Um, Got the lamb's tongue detail. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any lighting? Any additional lighting? No. It's all existing. Change out that gutter. Copper gutter. Oops. Oops, all right. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Seeing okay, none, can we have comments? Nice work. This is good. <laughs> uh, may I have a motion then? Wait, wait. Oh. I need to, I'd like to make a, a comment about that lawn area. Um, you know, our we're, we've been working to uh, create more water conservation, and the, the idea at, at, to save a little bit of water is just use lawn where it's absolutely necessary. One thing I would like to see is I would like to see uh, in, the, in this lawn area, I, I basically am very supportive of the project. I appreciate your efforts all through here. The plant palette is fantastic. I'd like to see uh, in this area... Uh, approximately 30% of that in drought tolerant landscaping in some form, but we're trying to save water, and that that's a lawn that could or could not be used. But you know, it's a, it. I would say add 30% drought tolerant landscaping to that big lawn pad. Island here. Because I'm not convinced that that's going to be used as it should, and this is an effort to save a little bit of water. So that's my comment. Thank you. Yeah. Let, let, let me let me kind of talk about it. I, I wonder, um, does the, 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 do the students use the lawn that much? They sit there to, or, or, or they use other lawns in the area? Uh, Let, let's go back to the very first sheet because I can yeah. show you what I've yeah. seen going out there yeah. mm -hmm. over all the years. Um, one of the things that we did many, many, many moons ago in the modernization, there used to be a road that came right up to this front step, and it's the only place in the world where I've seen terrazzo meet AC paving. All right. In, in Santa Barbara, I shouldn't say the world, I'm sure in Italy it happens. Uh, we got rid of that road and we turned that into um, uh, stamped concrete and so on. And we mm -hmm. had this new grass, which really, the front of this building loves this whole new yes. entrance as opposed to seeing police cars parked right in right. front of this beautiful yeah. entrance. Yeah. Um, students do use this area, right. and I, I personally think they will use this area. The school site is 
really excited about being able to use this space. I know that. Carl, you've talked to the grounds people about this area. I talked to the grounds people about it and I met with a member of the Alumni Association yesterday that was very enthusiastic about the landscaping plan and, and the lawn was one of the components that she did like because it's complementary to what's existing there now. It bleeds from that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I, I was just going to say, then then I'll revise the comment to say, just to have to study it again to see if you couldn't introduce some portion of drought tolerant landscaping to that lawn pad. Yet still keeping a lot of it open for use. Because his plant palette is fantastic. Uh, and I'm just going to say, study that. Uh, and I'll leave it at that. Well, you're just here to listen to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Very positive comments in general. Thank you. This is Good one set right here that's folded. Oh, you I'm going to, I don't see the other, yes, we're going to call for a 10 minute, 10 minute, 10 minute break.